and a bow. And now, here's your host, internationally known sportsman, Mark Fleming. Hi, this is Mark Fleming again with Out and About. And this week, you'll have an opportunity to see one of America's true legends, the Alaskan bush pilot. Hi, this is Sue Morgan, and this week we'll be taking you marlin fishing with world-famous captain Billy Black at Walker's Key in the Bahamas. You'll also have an opportunity to see Alaska's Four Rendezvous. It's a yearly extravaganza, and you'll have a ringside seat for all the games. Also, we'll discover the world of record-class snook on a fly rod in the jungles of Belize. You know, there are many different kinds of transportation here in Alaska, like the ship you see behind us. The local folks use it almost as frequently as we would use a bus. Probably the most legendary are the bush pilots. Great distances and rugged terrain are the rule in Alaska. Commercial airlines serve the larger communities, but the only means of transportation in many areas is the bush plane. These light aircraft are as common in Alaska as taxicabs in New York, hauling everything from sightseers to construction supplies. I can't tell you what all 21 of our planes did yesterday, but I can tell you what one did. It started off early in the morning going to Prince Rupert, Canada to bring 26, part of a group of 26 travel agents to Ketchikan. Then it flew some tourists off the Vietnam. We took them back to Misty Fjords National Monument. Then it took people over to one of the native villages, Cloak, families and groceries and parts. It hauled parts for some of the timber mills out in the west coast. And all along in this, the pilot gets to talk to these people, the workers, uh, what makes Alaska tick. Today's air charter operator is a far cry from the grizzled bush pilot of popular lore. Pilots like Nora Lee Murphy combined business and managerial skills with expertise in the cockpit. For those who make their home in the Alaskan wilderness, the bush pilot is essential to survival, and the pilots take the job seriously. What do visitors want to see most in Alaska? The glaciers and mountains. Within its borders, Alaska has more than half the world's glaciers. Perhaps the best known is the Columbia Glacier, as high as a 25-story building. From a bush plane, the view inspires new wonder for nature's creations. And we'll be back with marlin fishing from Walker's Key in the Bahamas after this. There are a lot of people who drag lures trying to catch blue marlin, but there's only one Captain Billy Black, and we're lucky enough to fish with him this week on Out and About. Everybody says, Billy, you don't get excited when you're fishing. Why not? <laughs> That's what it's all about, you know? Really, I loved it. It was great. Every time you see one, it makes up for the 40 hours or 50 hours you put in trolling to get to see a blue marlin, which, you know, that sounds rare, but that's not bad, you know? 40 hours to catch one. We'll see one about every 20, 25 hours. But we did good. We, we were out an hour and a half and had him on yesterday. Surprises the heck out of you when it happens early really? in the day, then. Yeah, that's, 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 what, that's great, you know? But then you feel, well, I hope it's not all my luck, you know, mm -hmm. like it was yesterday. Blue marlin. These are real oceanic heavyweights. Fish so powerful and majestic, it took a writer like Hemingway to immortalize their prowess in the old man in the sea. Numerous big blues over 500 pounds have been taken, and many tagged and released from the waters around Walker's Key, and much larger fish have been sighted. Many skippers honestly believe a 1,000-pound blue will be taken soon within the sight of their marina. Thanks to unusual topography, blue marlin fishing begins within 10 minutes of leaving the dock. That's due to the steep drop-offs close where the protective reef platform plummets away. It's along these drop-offs that the largest game fish, like the marlin, cruise in search of food. Marlin are present at Walker's Key all year round, though the heaviest concentrations occur during the winter and spring months. They are taken both trolling artificial lures and natural baits. 
A great deal of patience is required whether trolling artificial baits like a Bagley or a Boone or a cut ballyhoo that's been frozen and later rigged. Patience and teamwork, patience and teamwork. That's what's important in marlin fishing. But when it happens, all heck breaks loose. The excitement is real. And it's infectious. Oh, these weed rips there, we just came over with. See the color change in the water right here? Now, this is the kind of water we're looking for when you model this. You want an edge. Anything made up like that edge there. You see a dark green water on the back side. Hey, hey, let's bring her! Let's bring her! Let's bring her! Bring her! Hit him! Hit him! Hit him! All right! up this other strap over here on this side. Let's Still. Don't get any slack in that line moving around. You, are, you look good, man. Just your harness is straight and your guides are perfect. Okay. You're perfect. There's no truth to the rumor that the Bahamian government is putting Volkswagens down there, is there? <laughs> I hope not. Volkswagen's my hind leg. I'm a back truck. <laughs> Hello? Come on now. Don't let a shark get him, please. Look. <laughs> That may be some kind of record. He's a big one, boy, it feels like. I seen him eat that lure, boy. He was big. You've been fishing out of Walker's Bill. It'll be uh, be eight years come January. Quite a while. It's a long time at one place. Yeah. Well, it's it's good fishing, and that's what keeps us around. You know, and a lot quick to get in and out. Not not a big job getting in and out to the fishing ground. Not a lot of running time, and uh, you know we get a lot of time fishing. And Plus, really good fishing. And the facility is excellent as well, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. It's one of the best. Billy, there's all kinds of fishing in the world, but what makes that blue marlin so special? Well, the way he gets on his tail, I guess, just takes off and does his thing. Just excites anybody that's in the cockpit. He's gonna, they're gonna get excited when they see a marlin break the water and start boogieing. Are there special techniques? Uh, there's a lot of techniques. Well, there's a, a special lure trolling, and some people use baits, and we live bait them once in a while, but. Uh, Right now, we're using mostly lures, high-speed lure trolling. 
And that's been quite revolutionary in the industry, hasn't it? It's been doing real well. Uh, the Hawaiians started a long time ago over in Kona, Hawaii, and we've kind of taken up from them because they're catching all the big fish over there, so we've gone to lures. Saves you a lot of time in a tournament, too, doesn't it? Sure, you got more time in the water. Your baits are not you know, out of the water all the time, changing baits and getting new rigs and stuff are made up. You know, they're always in the water, and they look as good when they come out of the water as when they go in. Let me ask you a question. Does it really make a difference whether you have a novice fisherman? Well, no, not if you'll listen to what you got to say. If you, if you teach a man how to hold a rod and uh, the right technique, which most fishermen know, keep a tight line all the time, it's no real big problem. It's more teamwork, isn't it? It's teamwork. Everybody work together and feel good about it and have a good time doing it at the same time. That's not just an excuse in case you let this one off, is That's good. That's good now. Yeah, looking good now, Mike. This is a nicer fish than that one this morning. This is a big fish, Billy. Well, I think he may be hooked to the side of the head. He, I don't think he's big of that one this morning. I see the tail. Nice and easy. Let's try it. He might, you know, we don't want to pull the hook. Wahoo, about 80 pounds, approaches the boat. It's devoured in a savage attack by a huge dusky shark. And the fight begins all over again. How those arms feel in there, partner? What arms? Right? I don't even feel any anymore. Use your legs a little more. I am. Pump it back. Well, you're all right. Mike. Yeah. That's why fishing is so good at Walker's Key. And we'll be right back right after we take time out for these important messages.
One of the nation's largest winter carnivals, the Anchorage Fur Rendezvous, attracts more than 15,000 visitors. All of scenic Anchorage becomes a winter playground. The 10-day affair, known simply as Fur Rondy, is an outgrowth of the old-time trapper's gatherings. They served as a midwinter outlet to trade furs, tell tales, and take part in friendly competitions. There are more than 130 sporting events, ranging from snow machine racing to canine weight pulling contest. Highlight of the Rondi is the 75 mile World Championship sled dog race. Dog mushing is the official state sport of Alaska, but entries come from the lower 48 and as far away as Europe. Not all of the events are deadly serious, except to the contestants. Where else would you find a downhill canoe race held in a city park? With all the hot air generated during Rondi, what could be more appropriate than a balloon race? Other events include ice carving, a gold and silver auction, and the miners and trappers ball. Visitors can try their hands at traditional Eskimo sports, such as the blanket toss. And of course, there's one of America's largest public fur auctions, with lively bidding for pelts of bear, beaver, moose, and wolf. It's a far cry from the old trapper's gathering, but one thing is unchanged, the spirit of fellowship and fun that makes the Anchorage Fur Rendezvous uniquely Alaskan. And a sport that's uniquely Caribbean is fly fishing for snook. One of the most exciting forms of fishing is fly fishing. It doesn't take much to become a magic wand devotee. And here Mike Kendrick gets a chance to catch his first snook on a fly rod. Well, Mr. John, up home, a lot of the fishermen that I fish with up there are mostly the bass fishermen. I tell them about the fishing down here, and they can't, don't believe that you can land uh, and fight a tarpon or the large snook with a fly rod as effectively as you can with conventional tackle. But what I've found is with the fly rod, the length of the rod, you can actually fight a fish. Let the rod, hold the rod tight, hold it up high and let the rod actually do the fighting for you. And you can wear a larger fish down quicker with a fly rod than you can with conventional tackle. Saltwater fly fishing is a little different than your freshwater variety. You see the rods are longer, and you do have a larger reel capacity. On your reel, you use about 180 yards worth of Dacron backing, and this gives you the chance, if a fish really decides to run, to play him for the distance that it will take to land him. In some kinds of saltwater fishing, especially fly rotting, on the flats or in other clear areas, many times it's necessary to make long, delicate, accurate casts. Fishing the mangroves for snook does not require long casts, but they must be accurate. Once you start saltwater fly rotting, it may take you a few trips to learn what you're doing, but when you do, you'll be hooked. Oh, here it comes. I believe he's had it, Mr. John. Yeah, he's, got it. yeah he's, he's over. He's over. Boy, he's pretty. Come here, big fella. All right, yeah, he's... He's had it, Mr. John. The first three snook that Mike hooked this week, he lost because he tried to bring them into the boat too green. Here he makes sure that his fish is good and tired before he tries to land him. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, good boy. Oh, isn't he beautiful? Look at that. Oh, he is tired. He is really tired. Look at him. Ah, oh, beautiful fish. Beautiful. 
Manatee Lodge is located on an estuary system that encompasses hundreds of thousands of miles. It's the main breeding area for the second largest Great Barrier Reef in the world. All species of fish are plentiful. September and October seems to be the best time of the year for the huge snook. They seem to take topwater plugs a lot easier in September and October, although they will hit a topwater plug all year round. Patience is the key when fly rotting for snook. Cast after cast. But the snook that are caught at Manatee Lodge average much larger than the ones that are caught in the United States in the South Florida area, and they're more plentiful. Tarpon are caught all year round as well, averaging in the 60 to 80 pound range. But one thing that seems to be kind of curious, and that is that when the big snook are being caught, the tarpon are not around. January, February, and March seem to be the best month for tarpon, and the smaller snook are there also. Snapper, grouper, and other species of fish are also caught plugging the banks. But snook is the main attraction. This week on Out and About, you've seen many exciting vacation destinations. Join me, Mark Fleming, week after week as we take you to places and adventures that are truly out and about. Check, check, check. This is a KW video, three quarter to three quarter to VHS, voiceover, mix check. And I'd say about 